we get to the first question. <laughs> Thank you all for your remarks. Uh, Ms. Alexander, the first question is for all candidates. In the wake of $4 gas and $120 barrel oil, what can be done to move our country towards sustainable transportation? You have three minutes. Well, um, actually, I can tell you, um, having visited Europe, I, I, the gas price actually should be high because um, I'm first and foremost an environmentalist. And what happens when the gas prices go up is people take public transportation. They ride their bicycles. When I used to live in Tacoma Park, Maryland, I worked at National Rehab Hospital, and I didn't take the metro, actually, because it was too expensive. It was $5 when I was a student at BU. So I would take, ride my bicycle to um, uh, Washington Hospital Center every day in Tacoma Park. And granted, it took me a half hour, but I was in wonderful shape. So that's what I think. I think we need to, if you have an increase in gas prices, it makes people start to think, do I really need to drive here? Do I really need to drive there? Well, maybe I'll go ahead and walk to the store. And we all know that the population is becoming obese, and obesity is growing. And as a healthcare professional, a physical therapist, I am tired of treating people after open heart surgery at the age of 40 and 50. And some of them go to nursing homes, a 50-year-old in a nursing home. You know, so it's very, very sad. So I think it's actually a good thing. The bad thing about it, of course, is because it hurts the economy. But again, what it will need to do about it is, is increase the amount of alternative fuels. <coughs> and I think the corn is great, but I think we need to look into other avenues, such as sugarcane. Sugarcane is actually cheaper, I think it's eight times cheaper, and it's more efficient than, than corn. But you know why we're doing corn? It's because the lobbyists, because as career politicians have relationships with lobbyists, so they want to get reelected, so they're going to vote with the corn. But someone like me, who has no special interest, who hasn't taken any money from anybody, is not going to tell me what to do. So I'm not going to vote purely because I'm a Democrat. I'm not going to vote purely because I'm a Republican. I can vote what's best for the people. I am not corrupt, and I don't have to I don't have to give back to people who have given money, so I would vote to increase the amount of, of alternative fuels. But again, I don't think we should get rid of the gas tax. I think it's actually a good incentive to get people up and walk in. So, thank you. Um, when George Bush took office, gasoline was $1.49 a gallon. So we put two old oil men in charge of the country and we now have the results. Is that this is a deliberate policy. They talk about supply and demand, but when the Saudis don't increase their supplies, then the price goes up. It's as simple as that. This is an engineered increase. Now there are things that I think we've got to do just because of geopolitical pressures to get ourselves off of oil and that is energy independence and we have to do hydrogen we have to do fuel cells we have to do a whole host of things that's why i propose that we have a darpa type agency in the federal government that starts looking at all of these alternatives for automobile transit and all the rest of it so that we can start investing wisely not just investing but investing wisely so much of our money on, for example, uh, Lori mentioned the, the ethanol corn, soybeans and corn. It was, it was to give farmers more money on those crops, and now we're seeing the price of food go up. We know that. And the question is, why don't we have agencies helping us with hydrogen and fuel cells and all the rest of it, as they should be, and they don't. We need more money in transit. Transit is one of the ways that we can save oil prices, keep our demand down. Uh, I was the first person to get uh, money for rail to Dulles in the federal government in 1994. I hope to go back and continue that effort. We've got to be smarter about how we use our energy dollars. But quite honestly, if you pick oil men to run the country, you get what you get. <laughs> well, um, unlike what's been said, I, I don't think $4 a gallon is a good thing. Uh, there are a lot of people in this country, 
even in our community. We're hoping four dollars a gallon in trying to get back and forth to work and trying to make sure they make their medical visits, getting their kids to school or practice at uh, sports it is a huge burden and is beginning to force people to make choices uh, that are unpalatable choices. Uh, there are lots of reasons why gas may be at four dollars a gallon. Uh, and they include everything from the theory of peak oil production to uh, the fact that, you know, in some, in some places uh, we don't have the refining capacity we should have, and in some other cases, unless it may be right, there, there, may, be, uh, there may be something else in oil uh, that, that limits the availability of oil. But in the long run, uh, we as Americans have to do something about weaning ourselves off foreign petroleum. Uh, we talked about energy independence in the Nixon years. We're more dependent on oil imports today than ever before. Two thirds of our oil. And, um, and I think we have to do several things. We have to do lots of things. But we have to, we, we, we Americans know how to do things when we want to, in terms of an organizing principle. John Kennedy said, let's get a man, today, hopefully he would have said a man or a woman, <laughs> to the moon by the end of the day. And we did. And we did. In World War II, we said, my God, we've got to develop the atom bomb for the Nazis. And we did. We need to develop the technology that exists so that we're getting 100 miles per gallon to a vehicle. That can be done. But it requires an organizing principle. It requires incentivization of, our, of research and development and technology and industry. We can revive a whole industry and improve the environment dramatically while we're at it and eliminate Foreign oil imports. But it requires creativity. It requires leadership. It requires a willingness to make that kind of investment at the federal level. Because only the federal government can frankly do that. We also need to wean ourselves off oil just in general. I mean, we have to look at alternative fuels. We have to look at renewable energy. We also need to look at alternatives to the automobile. That's why I am such a passionate advocate for transit. I'm proud of the fact that two years ago, I received the Local Elected Official of the Year Award from Nationwide, from the American Public Transit Administration, because I, of my advocacy for rail. Rail develops, light rail in other quarters, making sure that we have choices beyond the automobile, critical for the future. Well, it's primarily the transportation question, so I'm going to cover that first and we'll talk about energy. The transportation affects all of us. You've just got, for those of you going into the city here, you've got a heck of a commute. It's horrible. It's horrible going, trying to get into work and trying to get back. You know, I've, I've drive, I primarily <coughs> take a metro, take a metro bus, I've done it all. We have been failed in what's happened locally, state, and federally with transportation dollars in this region. Across the board, it's been a failure. God love them, people have tried, but we've fallen short. So, I'll tell you what I support. First of all, I've been a long supporter of Rail and Dulles and the Tysons going under, sorry, the tunnel going under the ground. <coughs> About a year and a half ago, I wrote a letter to Washington Post telling local, state, and federal electives back in January 2007 that they got to get their act together. No more closed door meetings, but if you have a closed door meeting, get together and talk to each other. Let's find the art of the possible because that's the job of the politicians. To find the art of the possible. And what do we have today? We have nothing. The basket is empty. And I think that's an application of what I think should do. So what do I want to do? Well, I stood up at a press conference and said, I will fight for Rail to Dulles. I will fight for that $900 million. I will also fight to have that project restructured because I understand cost, schedule, and performance. And I understand the current Rail to Dulles <coughs> I believe that going underground through the Tysons is unquestionably the best thing to do. And I will fight for that. If I fall short in either one of those, I will tell you exactly what happened and why. I will stand up and have a press conference and say because of A, B, and C, we weren't able to accomplish this. That's what I will do in the press conference and transportation. We need to continue doing things like transit going and development. If we have that metro station going through Texas, then let's make sure we build people homes that can be right next to it so they're not out on the streets. When we talk about energy, I'll move to that. We have huge instability in this world. We have instability because the Bush administration decided to take on a war that was unneeded. At the same time, we have the Bush administration talking about let's fight oil. Now, what do you think you would do if you were an oil company? I'm not defending oil companies today, but let's look at the pure economics of the instability in the Middle East and what has happened to your oil prices, how much you're paying for them. They are directly related. We 
be the leader to go to Congress to end this war, to forcefully turn this thing around so we can get back to peace and stability and use our energy dollars for renewable energy sources instead of drilling in the Antoine and going up.